Hey, it's Jeffrey Craner with two things to tell you about. One, we have a live stream tonight, Saturday, May 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. This show is a story about the glow cloud, All Hail, and the show is called All Hail, which makes tons of sense. All Hail is a super fun show, and it will require you to recite an oath of fealty, which I know you're up for. And we have some amazing guest performers, along with Cecil Baldwin, there's Meg Bashwinner, Symphony Sanders, Hal Lublin, Joseph Fink, and me. Of course, Disparition will be there, sweetly scoring the whole show, and our weather is Dane Terry of Dream Boy Podcast fame. So, that's all hail tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Go to welcometonightville.com and click on live shows to get your tickets, which are pay what you want, starting at five bucks. And even if you can't make it tonight, get your tickets today anyway, because the stream will be available for you to view through June 15th. Okay, that's one. Now here's two. Joseph and Meg wrote a book, and it's out now. It's a heck of funny and touching memoir called The First Ten Years, wherein they chronicle the first decade of their relationship, year by year, but they did it separately. So you can read Joseph's side and then get the truth from Meg, or, or maybe it's the other way around. The thing is, it's a really excellent book, and they're both incredible storytellers. So go get The First Ten Years wherever you get your books and or head over to welcometonightville.com, click on books, and you can sign up for one of their live stream book events. They've got May 17th with Malaprop Books in conversation with Johnny Sun, May 19th with The Booksmith in conversation with Mara Wilson, May 20th with Books and Books, May 24th with Anderson's Bookshop in conversation with Hal Lublin, uh, June 4th with Literary Bookstore, and June 10th with Bookshop Santa Cruz. And there are still signed editions available on our website through Oblong Books. Great. We did it. We got through both announcements. And now, the episode. Oh, oh, and hey, thanks. Hi, it's me, Joseph Fink, co-writer and creator of this podcast, Welcome to Night Vale. So, because of some scheduling issues that are too boring to get into here. We had to delay the episode that was planned for today, but do not worry. Don't hit stop on this episode. We still have a special treat for you all. For years now, we've gotten emails asking us questions about the making of Night Vale and our favorite characters and what we think about this or that, and mostly we just don't have the time or energy to answer every single one of those, but I thought it would be cool today to take a few of the most interesting emails and give them the answers they deserve. So this first one is from Lucy in Claremont. Hi, Lucy. And she writes, Hi, whoever this is. I don't know what you're getting at with this show or why you're claiming to write it. These are actual broadcasts from an actual town. I can hear it on my radio right now. How did you find this radio station? What do you know about Night Vale? And why are you pretending that you wrote any of this? I want answers. Uh, huh. Okay, sorry, I didn't pick these emails out, actually. I know I kind of tried to make it sound like they were hand-selected, but our business manager, Joella, is the one who actually... But I should have vetted these. This is definitely a weird... I'm honestly not sure what to say about this one. Lucy left her phone number. I mean, I get... I get that it's just a joke, but, you know, it might be interesting to call her. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. Hold on. Hello? Oh, hi. Oh, wow. I didn't know anyone picked up anymore What with all that. Uh, anyway, is this Lucy from Claremont? Uh, who is this? Right, yeah, okay. This is Joseph Fink with Welcome to Night Vale. You wrote in, and, and thank you, but I, I was a little confused. Oh, so you're the ones passing that work off as your own. But it is our work. I, I've been writing it since... Look, I don't know what your deal is, but I've been listening to broadcasts from Night Vale for decades. Decades? Yeah, on the radio. You know, like podcasts, but hosted in the atmosphere. What's the frequency? They don't come on any specific frequency. They just sometimes find me when I'm listening to something else. Joe Frank on KCRW, Stained on K-Rock back when that was a sentence that made sense. The normal signal wavers, and then static, and then Cecil. Is that how it works for you? No, because we're a podcast. I wrote these episodes, and we've never licensed them for radio. <laughs> uh... 
I don't know why you called me just to keep up the charade. I was excited to hear from someone else who knew about the show, but if you're just going to keep lying... I... I don't think I'm lying. Lucy? Lucy... She hung up. I don't feel like I have any better handle on what's happening here, but I'm going to reach out to Cecil. Cecil Baldwin narrates her show, lives in Brooklyn, is an actor, you know? So I'm going to call him, see what he thinks about this. Hi, you've reached Cecil Baldwin. I don't really listen to my voicemails, but go ahead and leave one. Hey, Cecil. Uh, It's Joseph. Just have kind of a weird issue going on. Nothing to worry about, but give me a call. I'll just text you. That's what people do. Never mind. Don't bother listening to this. I'll just text you. (sighs) Let me call Jeffrey Craner. That's my co-writer. We write the show together because it's a fictional show. It's not real. Uh, They're all scripts, and then actors read the scripts. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, this is going to sound weird. Did, yeah? did you see the email from Lucy yesterday? It was sent to our info at Nightville address. Uh, Lucy. That's that's the one. Yeah, let me see. Aha. Uh-huh. Hi, whoever this is. I don't know what you're getting at. Actual broadcast from an actual town. Why are you pretending? Yeah, I don't know. It's just a weird fan email. We get those sometimes. Probably don't respond, I'd say. I called her. Okay. So she insists that she can hear the broadcasts on her radio and that Night Vale is real. But it's not. No, I, so... I know. I know. You know what? This was silly. Sorry for bothering you. Tell your tell your cats hi. Oh, I will tell them that right now. Reba, Barry, Carol, Uncle Joseph says hi. Okay. So I'm just like Googling Night Vale, which usually comes up with a picture of, I don't know, our books or our live shows or fan art. Top result is our website usually, but that's not okay. That's not what I'm seeing. Town of Night Vale, population, founding date, Wikipedia link? The city itself has a Wikipedia page. It's pretty extensive. There are user pics of Grove Park and the Moonlight All Night Diner and... Okay, hold on. I'm gonna Google the Moonlight All Night Diner. It has a Yelp listing. Ouroboros Road, Night Vale, open 24 hours, 4.3 stars with 267 reviews. Luann says, you have to try the Invisible Pie. It's just an empty plate and also it's delicious. None of this stuff was here before. There was a fan wiki, I think. Where did the fan wiki go? I'm clicking on our own site, welcome to nightvale.com, and it's a page for a Burger King in Toledo, Ohio. There's a close-up picture of a deep fryer, weird choice, and a notice that they're hiring. I think our site got hacked. That's a thing, right? Burger King hacking podcast sites. I think I heard about that on All Things Considered. I need to... I'm going to call Cecil Baldwin again. Obviously, he's the actor reading the scripts, so he knows that it is fake, and it would be helpful, I think, right now, for me to hear that. I don't know. I don't need an excuse. I'm just going to... Hi, you've reached Cecil. I don't listen to my voicemails, but go ahead and leave one. That's okay. I'll call him later. He'll be available later. It's it's just so... So I've been writing Welcome to Nightville scripts since early 2012. I started out writing this paragraph about lights above the Arby's, and it just felt right, and I kept following that feeling. I was 25 years old when I wrote that first little bit of Night Vale. So if, if Night Vale is real, if these are actual broadcasts from a small desert town, then what have I been writing? Who am I? Where do I fit in this reality? You know, these aren't small questions. It's not a small thing finding out that your fiction is just real now, I guess. Could I go visit Night Vale? No, I wouldn't. I mean, I couldn't. Oh, wait. 
The Delta app shows there are direct flights from JFK to the Randy Newman Memorial Nightville Airport. No, I, I won. Hey, Jeffrey, what's up? So, okay, so I've been doing some digging, and well, I think I know what's going on. Okay, great. I'm really glad someone does. Night Vale is real now. It became real. Well, it's always been real. It's a town in the southwest, a very, very weird town, and it exists and always has, but that wasn't the case even yesterday. This is... If I'm honest, it's not making a ton of sense to me. Well, that's because it's simultaneously super confusing and completely simple. Night Vale was never real, and then one day it was always real. It went from fiction to nonfiction, and when that happened, its entire history became nonfiction too, and so it always existed. I, I do not know how to react to that. Yeah, it's wild. Hey, did you see the expense report Joella sent? I have not looked at it yet. So what does that mean for us? I mean, if we wrote this fiction and now this fiction is real, does that mean, are we gods? Are we in danger? It was great on theology, but both of those are possible. I mean, I'd say danger is more likely than us suddenly being divine. C Carol, no. I'm sorry. Carol has learned that she can climb curtains now. That cat's a real bowl of mashed potatoes. She used to be when she was a kitten. Now she's more of a teenage dirtbag. I am... Sorry, I'm still extremely caught up on this Night Vale is real now thing. Do you know if Cecil's okay? I, I mean, our Cecil? I'm not sure. No! Sorry, Carol's acting out. I have to go. Oh, uh... Bye. So, this seems a good time to try Cecil again. Uh, he probably was just a little busy... It's usually a busy time of year for him, I think. Probably didn't see my calls yet. I'll just... Give me one moment. The number you dialed is not a working number. Please check the number and dial again. El número que marcó no está en servicio. Verifíquelo. What the f... I don't... Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna pause this recording for a bit. I, I'm gonna drive down... To Cecil's apartment. It's a couple hours. I, I need to understand what's happening. I will be back in a moment. This is just one of those things. You ever had one of those days that's a day, you know? It's just a day, capital A, capital D. In the meantime, here's a song I like. On the freeway, driving so fast, the trees sway when I blow past them. I've nearly wrecked when the DJ quits playing my favorite hits because I was changing the station quick. Let's face it, what does it really mean if I let your song play to the end and never feel a thing? Me, I've got illumination on time release, that it's way to the 87 off I 90 East. Life is great. Looks like I'm making the right mistakes on my shit like Nate Diaz and fighting weight. Can't drop the ball for life working them high skirts and tight shirts at the shopping mall. I might flirt with a slice murk and not at all. Surrender the foolish hood again to pursue what I'm truly meant to do with my full intent. In past recollection is clear, my peers are too distracted getting up and cracking beers to perfect the craft all those years. Still they know that I care I'm showing up there when America Airlines can lower the fare Here's the second try, cheers to a better life If you'll excuse me, I was clearing names on my phone I don't recognize It's past due for making a change, start anew Hard to do, fixated on pain When the brain supports washing away Any fame and glory, many who came before me Same old story, just painted poorly Hues of blue over shades of green Never jaded, jade is one of the greatest shades of green I mean, I'm easily amazed with the way sun rays seem to break the leaves As if to create laser beams, how it sways and leans and a breeze sweeping the landscape like waves of a stream Of all the breathtaking scenery that I've seen in nature's kingdom These are a few of my favorite things However true with the subtle accents of a raven's wings Here's the second try
Misunderstood And there I stood under a burden Judgment until what I heard Cause my slumber was third Life is finite My entire life I have yet to be disenchanted Admire when the fireflies At twilight by night I wrote this next to a window sill The palm which a whippoorwill Sits so still The pain It's merely a cheap frame Of a picture On which a tree stands Between me and the Hudson River I wish to see threefold Of my complete view With the top floor But I don't need to Not anymore I'm content with the deep blue glimmer that sneaks through Somehow as if they renew, can this be true? The DJ quit playing my favorite hit, so let's face it Change the station, here's the second try Here's to a better life, nothing quite re-energizes Like a farewell to the petty lies Here's the second try Okay, I went to Cecil's apartment. There was no answer in the bell, but uh, the front door was open. So I, I went upstairs and I knocked. There was nothing again. It was unlocked, so I went inside. On the other side of the door was a back hallway of a restaurant. It looked like white tile, uh, white walls, a door that said storeroom, three bathrooms, you know, the usual. So I, I went down the hallway and I was calling for Cecil, just like, Hey, Cecil, you there? And I was in a diner. And there were the, all these people looking at me. A woman walked up. She, she had a, a name tag that said Laura. And she had branches growing out of her chest and her arms and her neck. And that sounds whimsical, but, but I want you to imagine the reality of that. The strange rough skin where the flesh meets bark and the way it twists up out of the body. It was, it was a lot to try to wrap my head around. This woman, Laura, asked me, are you looking for Cecil? He's not here right now. He's usually at the radio station. So I, I thanked her and I stumbled out. It's sunset right now where I am in this small desert town. The wind is hot and it smells like, like honey and mud. There is, a, there is a loud thumping sound as a black helicopter flies overhead, disappearing into the last of the sunlight behind the mountains. A man walks up. He is covered in microphones, more microphone than man, and he says, Interloper, what are you doing here? And I say, I don't know how I got here. I don't understand what is happening. And he nods sympathetically and says, this is common. The whole time, he is furiously scribbling down notes in a notepad, and blinking red recording lights flash over his body, like a city scene from an overnight flight. I have to go, I say, and I start running, and that's where I am now, running down this road in a desert town I invented. I'm passing by a, a strip mall where there is a, a big Rico's Pizza, and I made up that name. I made up that name, and here it is, sign in the window, now serving wheat and wheat byproducts. But what's in the kitchen doesn't look like wheat. That looks, oh my god. Oh God. Okay. Keep moving. Next door, there is a laboratory uh, in bright and buzzing neon lights. It says, Carlos's lab, science while you wait. And then a, another big neon sign of a guy in a lab coat and his legs does a, does a high kick in repeating animation. It's kind of, it's kind of cute, actually. There's police tape all over the door, lots of signs saying, warning, science, and uh, curiosity, forbidden. Lots of old police tape peeling and layered on top of each other. Down the road, I can see the Desert Flower Bowling Alley and Arcade Fun Complex. Uh, looks, like it's, looks like it's really hopping tonight. I guess that's where everyone is. Parking lot full of cars and government agents taking down the license plate numbers of the vehicles and then giving the slips of paper to birds who fly away to make nests with them. And, oh, oh, oh. 
There's the radio station. That's not how I imagined. It's a, a windowless concrete structure. Looks abandoned. Weather beaten. Cursed by God. It looks like no human being has breathed within it for a thousand years. I guess I have to... I guess I'm going in. I'm at the door. It's chained shut, but the, the lock has rusted off. I'm pulling out the chains. I'm opening the door. It smells like... like malt and dust. There's no lights on. It doesn't seem like there's any power. I see a door that says station management. I hear movement inside, but I'm... I'm not... I wouldn't... I'm not gonna go in there, obviously. The door is warm. It's... It's hot, actually. Ow! Well, I guess this has been listener questions. Thanks to... To everyone who wrote in. Sorry I couldn't get to all of you. Uh, let's do one more, just to round out the episode. Martine asks... What was the most fun episode to make? Great question, Martine. There's so many. What was that? What was that? Sorry. I thought I saw, but it was nothing. There's no one else in here. It's dark and abandoned. Well, Martine... Uh, I liked making episode 67, Best Of. That was fun. And uh, episode 71, The Registry of Middle School Crushes. Uh, That was a good time to write. Thanks for your email. Thanks for listening. That was nothing. There was nothing behind me. Because nothing looks like that. Hold on. I hear someone talking. Hello? I see a light on. I think it might be the booth. Cecil? I hope all that you out there have something to sleep through it with. Or at least good memories of when you did. Good night, Night Vale. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Night Vale Presents. It is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner and produced by Disparition. The voice of Joseph was Joseph Fink. The voice of Lucy was Julia Morizawa. The voice of Jeffrey was Jeffrey Craner. Carol is a bowl of mashed potatoes. The voice of Night Vale is Cecil Baldwin. Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.bandcamp.com. This episode's song Joseph liked was Hey by Standpoint, featuring Lady Daisy River. Find out more at soundcloud.com slash standpoint dash one. Comments, questions, email us at info at welcometonightvale.com or follow us on Twitter at Night vale Radio. Or eat a garlic scape you foraged from the side of the road. Check out welcometonightvale.com for info about our live-streamed performance of All Hail, which is tonight. But you can watch it at any point over the next month. And you know what? You should. Today's proverb, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. But then, there is also a light at the end of an anglerfish's tendril. <laughs>